It's time to get you started on congas. I'm Kalani, this is World Drum Club, and this is your first conga lesson. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get situated. You can see that I have the drum at a height, or I have myself at a height where my elbows and arms are pretty much level. The drum's a little bit higher than my elbows, but you can see that it's pretty ergonomic, right? So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you're sitting uh, appropriately, I'm gonna be comfortable. I use a drum throne because they're adjustable, but if you need to stack a couple chairs or put a pillow under your chair, or whatever you need to do to get so that the drum isn't super low, because we don't want our wrists to be bent, or it's not really high, uh, because it's gonna be hard to do some of the techniques if you're not in this basic position. So get comfortable, get situated. Then, if you want to, you can leave the drum flat on the floor like this, or you can take a more traditional uh, holding position, which would be to scoot forward a little bit, put the drum kind of between your legs, and then tip it slightly towards your dominant hand side. So I'm right-handed. I'm going to play the drum. I'm actually left-handed, but I'm going to play the drum right-handed. And you can see that it just I'm just tipping it a tiny bit. And this would really be what you see most conga players doing if they're playing seated. Of course, you can also play congas in a stand, but right now we're just talking about kind of your traditional conga technique. So seated, drum tips slightly to the side, maybe forward a tiny bit, and then let's learn the basic tones. And one of the first tones that you're gonna play on the conga drum is, and, and at any tuning, we're gonna cover tuning in another video. So right now it's just about your technique. Uh, you have the overhead view. You can see that I've got my hand pretty much inside the drum head circumference, you know, just on the top of the drum. My hand's flat. I'm gonna raise it a little bit from the elbow and a little bit from the wrist, and I'm just going to strike it like that. And I can leave my hand on the head, or I can kind of bounce off. All right, both of those work. That is called the bass tone, and basses can be what we call closed, where you're staying on the head, or open, where you bounce off. And this goes for every, of, every one of the tones I'm gonna show you in this lesson. So you can have closed versions or what we sometimes call muted versions and then you'll hear teachers talk about open, uh, open basses, open, open tones and then open slap tones. And we also have closed bass, clo not well, muted tones and uh, muted slaps or closed slaps. Right now we're just gonna focus on the basic technique which is where to strike the drum and what part of your hand to use when you strike the drum. Here's the side view. So this is bass. And you can bounce or you can let it rest flat. And the bass tone is really just where you get the air inside the shell kind of going boop. You know, it's more about the air in the drum vibrating than the actual drum head. We use the bass tone in different rhythms as a kind of an accent tone. All right, the next tone you're gonna learn, which is the most common or one of the most common tones is the open tone. The open tone uses the fingers all together and look at my hand position. I am basically got my knuckle line lined up with the edge of the drum. My thumb can be up a little out. It could just, just as long as it's out of the way. And I'm going to, again, lift a little bit from my arm and my wrist. So it's not all wrist, not like that, all right? It's both. And then I'm gonna strike the head and bounce off. Now that's a nice open tone and you, you can hear the drum resonating. It's got a full sound. Okay, so what are the important things when you're doing an open tone? Fingers acting kind of together like one unit, bouncing off the head. So if it starts to get thin sounding, there could be two things happening. One, you could be too far out towards the edge. So that would sound like this. 
right? I've got like half of my fingers there. Or you could be relaxing your hand too much, relaxing your fingers too much, and your fingers are kind of splaying out or bending a little, curving, and then you're getting more like a thinner sound or more like a slap tone, which is another sound. Uh, and that would sound more like this if, if that was happening. So that's kind of a thin, spread out sound. It's not focused and full like we want the open tone. Okay, so let's go on and learn our third and highest pitch tone, and that is called the slap. And the slap, the way I teach it, the way I think about it, is the slap is a harmonic of the head. It uses a technique that's similar to the open tone, so you can line up your hand in much the same way, but the main difference is you're going to relax, relax your hand, relax your fingers, and let your fingers curve a little bit. They might spread, your fingers might spread out a little, that's okay. You don't want to over exaggerate it like that, but you know, just relax your hand. Strike the drum in pretty much the same place as you did for the open tone and let your fingertips contact the head mainly, right? So the main point of contact is going to be tips as opposed to the open tone, which is all of this. So what does that sound like? You hear the harmonic effect. So what we're doing there is making the head vibrate in a more complex way, kind of like, like you pluck a guitar string. If you put your finger lightly in the middle, you get a pitch that's an octave up. If you put your uh, finger lightly a quarter of the way down the string, you get a pitch that's two octaves above the fundamental. And that's kind of the same idea um, here. Uh, of course, we're not playing exact pitches, but we're getting an effect of a higher, sharper sound because we're striking the drum using a technique. It's not about hitting the drum harder, all right? So don't beat your hands up when you try the slap. You can do the slap softly as opposed to the open tone. So practice that in both hands, basses, opens, and slaps. Relax. And then you'll just mix and match. You can warm up with basses and opens. Maybe go to opens and slaps. And then maybe all three up and down. As I mentioned earlier, you can do a muted or closed version of all the tones. So we already covered the bass. What is the muted open tone or closed open tone? I know it sounds contradictory, but that would be like this. And this is actually a great tone. You'll hear conga players using this tone. So the muted tone, you could just call it the muted tone. It sounds like this. Let me give you the side view. And I'm just sticking on the head. All right. Similarly, the slap tone can be open or closed. So if it's open, it's what I just had showed you. Like that. That's an open slap. Closed slap, stay on the head. So the idea is the same with all of those. You can let the head vibrate, get out of the way, get off the head quickly. That's our open category. Or you could stay on the head, shorten the duration, and tighten up that sound. And that is our muted category of tones. All right, so now you know the three main tones we play on the conga drum, bass, open, and slap. There are some other techniques we'll cover in other videos, but this is your first conga lesson. So you've learned how to position yourself with the drum, sitting in a comfortable position with the drum head, about your elbow height, maybe a little higher, 
and then tipping slightly if you want. You don't have to tip it, but if you want, you can tip it slightly to your dominant side, or in this case, right-hand side if you're right-handed. And you've learned bass, open slap, in the open and closed or muted uh, techniques. All right, I'm Kalani. This is World Drum Club. If you like this lesson, like it, subscribe to the channel. See us at patreon.com slash Kalani for more. And I will see you in another lesson. Thanks for dropping by. World Drum Club.